Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble in whom is my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink of offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You are my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Hello and grace and peace to you. If you notice, the scriptures do not sugarcoat human beings. That's why the Psalms are special to me. I love them for that. They're real. You'll notice real human struggles within their verses. And also that's why I feel embraced by the immediate aftermath of the Easter story. There isn't immediate joy. There isn't a large celebration right away. The way the Gospels tell it, there's fear. There's fake news. There's disbelief. There's idle tales, there's dismay. I deep, deeply appreciate where the early manuscripts of Mark left that Easter story. Here's how they end it, how Mark ends it. The women fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The end. And of course, there are other shortening, shorter endings, uh, other endings that are added. And of course, we know as well that the story doesn't end there, or we wouldn't be here today. But knowing the end doesn't preclude the reality of the angsts that even Jesus' followers, his closest followers, experienced. That's always been true in our human history, in our human story not the least among those who are called children of God in our scriptures. Note the words from the Psalm 16 that we just shared. There's the cry, protect me, O God. We're not sure from what, but something in this psalmist's experience is threatening. It's uncertain. It's fearful. It's out of, out of control. And I believe this cry has found its place in scripture because such cries are embedded deep within our human experience. That's why I'm here in front of a camera today, rather than face to face with you, because there's something microscopic running amok in our lives, threatening life and health and livelihood. And we're struggling to find some control over it. Protect me, O oh God. But way back then, as well as now, there's more to the story. The Reverend Dr. Michael Curry, the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church USA, in his virtual Easter message, reminded us that on that first Easter, the followers of Jesus didn't know there was an Easter. They were just going about what love does. And in the midst of that, as they were going to the tomb and about the way, there was fear, there was confusion, there was disbelief. 
But even though they didn't know it, Dr. Curry reminds us, there was an Easter already. And gradually that reality crept into their lives, ushering them into doing what love does in revolutionary ways. Our psalmist for today also grows beyond whatever fear and concerns grips the heart. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. Do you remember those days as a child when fever racked your body and mom or dad or a special person in your life would come into the room and put their hands on your forehead in a, in a way that was so comforting and reminded you that you were cared for and that you would be okay. How many times have my wife and I noticed a lump or a perceived threat to our life and health? that screamed to our psyches that we are mortal. But then we would remember the manifold gifts that have blessed our lives, not the least the love that we have shared over these many years. And with the psalmist, we'd affirm, yes, the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. Some say when the psalmist refers in verse 3, if you would ever find it in your own Bibles, in verse 3 he refers to the holy ones in the land, that this is a reference to the community of faith that is all around. They're like the parent with a comforting hand on the forehead or the spouse who recalls a life of faithful blessings. Have you noticed the faces that come before us in our virtual services? Or maybe it's for you, it's been through phone calls, faces that re, you recall just with the sound of the voice, or maybe there are waves from neighbors across the street, or maybe you see all these people on TV who are giving themselves in such incredible ways. Blessings. They're blessings. There is an Easter, even in this time, even if we don't have it all together yet and understand what's going to happen in the end. We are learning how much we mean to each other. We are reaffirming that we need each other, that there are servants of hope and grace always being raised up in our midst that love and thoughtfulness and service and compassion win. The psalmist got it right. In your presence there is fullness of joy. So keep the faith, spread the joy, embrace and be embraced by the peace of Christ. There is an Easter right now. Amen.